It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. And we've got a great podcast for you today. We're going to talk about fake news. There's a lot of headlines out there you need to know about to make the best decisions on your portfolio. Bob and I call it the worst offenders of fake news. We're going to talk about the A word. Yes, we're going to do it. Annuities. Everything you need to know about annuities, we're going to talk about it today. Break them down so you better understand them, so you make a better decision about owning an annuity or maybe not owning an annuity. Along with our mailbag, we got some great questions this week about pensions. Should you take your pension as a lump sum? Should you take the payout from the company? We break that down for you. Along with cash, are you sitting with way too much cash right now? Are you not making right decisions with your portfolio? Cash is trash. You need to have the right amount of cash sitting on the sidelines, but not too much cash. We're going to talk about that as well, so check it out. So Bob, as you may have heard, there's a lot of stuff out there that gets labeled as fake news. And I know that's shocking to you because you believe everything. Well, you know, Rye, I, I was around when Lincoln invented the internet, so I believe everything I read. <laughs> that's true, by the way. He definitely did invent the internet. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's just <laughs> let's establish that right now. But you know, let's just be honest here. In the world of the financial news, some of the more salacious financial headlines we've heard uh, are not exactly accurate. And one that we hear often, Bob, is Social Security is going broke. Is this something we need to worry about when we're putting together our financial planning, that that money's just not going to be there? Well, it's something that, uh, you know, when I started 45 years ago, right, in the 70s, they told me, hey, Bob, Social Security is going broke. And uh, I just checked today, <laughs> and, it, and it's not. And, and this is definitely fake news. Yeah, and I think the thing we have to think about when it comes to this is there's not one politician out there that wants to nix Social Security. It's basically political suicide. Well, what do you tell me, Rye? What do you, politicians' number one goal is not to protect your Social Security payment? <laughs> Shock. Yes, it's about getting reelected. So to take away Social Security would be a big deal. But I think some of the things that we've seen and we could see in the future are number one is they're gradually increasing the full retirement age. Like by the time I get Social Security, I'll probably have to be ninety. Yeah, I mean that's what they did back in 1983. They saw that uh, the trust fund, you know, the lockbox, was getting emptied, and uh, so they just jerry-rigged the system and, and they made some changes. And you know what? They'll end up doing the same thing because, like you said, it's the third rail in politics. The last thing you want to do is take away a benefit you know, to hundreds of thousands of baby boomers. That's right. So if anything, you'll see some adjustments to it. The other thing is it could be more fully taxed. Right now, only 85% of Social Security is taxed. They could bring that up to 50%. So there's a lot of things they can do to marginalize your benefit, which also speaks to, Bob, you know, if you're retired now, or if you're 66 or wherever your full retirement is, it may make sense to take Social Security early because if you wait that next four years till you're 70, they may have marginalized your benefits where you're getting less of a deal. And that's something to think about. Well, that makes a lot of sense, right? You know, they're not going to run out of money, but they may marginalize what your benefit is. And, you know, it's not that simple. I mean, it's Social Security, you can make your claim about a couple hundred different iterations, and especially when you're considering your spouse. So you ha every one of you are unique and you have a unique situation. You really need to have that analysis done to make sure you maximize what you're entitled to. Yeah. And I'm pretty confident, Bob, if you call the Social Security hotline, they're not going to give you those options and they're not going to break it down for you in a very, very efficient manner. <laughs> so, you know, Ryan, all fairness, are... though, they're very helpful. But, you know, if you don't know what you're talking about, they can't give you the answers you're looking for. You need you need a pro to be with you. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, there's literally hundreds of ways that you can take Social Security and the way that you should take it is not the same as your neighbor or your family member who took it one way, you've got to know for yourself. And that's why like we run a calculator that's fantastic, but you need to run those numbers because it can have a significant impact on your retirement, how you take that Social Security benefit. Well, you, you know, I, I use that calculator. You, you, you did the calculation for mom and I, and we got substantially more money than I ever thought we would because of a spousal benefit that I wasn't aware of. So you're yeah. absolutely right. Doing that analysis is key. Another fake headline that we've heard very often, I feel like we've heard it for the last decade more than ever, Crash of the dollar is imminent. Buy gold now, Bob. Have you stockpiled gold in your basement? That's the question I want to <laughs> ask you today. You know, I've been hearing gold commercials ever since I was born. So, you know, it's the dollar's going to crash or it's a recession's coming or it's the end of the world. 
But, you know, the, the fact of the matter is there's certain charlatans out there that have been pushing this narrative for a long time. And you just Google that right now. Crash of dollar imminent. Buy gold now. Guess whose picture comes up? I'm going to guess it's my least favorite economist, the guy that's always negative, always telling you that's doom and gloom because a broken clock sometimes is right twice a day, but this guy's never right. Well, this guy, Peter Schiff, he's been saying this for 12 years. And, you know, I just checked, right, the dollar's at a 12-year high versus the euro. <laughs> he's not a little bit wrong. He's nothing but wrong. <laughs> and the other thing is, I mean, if you look at the numbers long term, gold's very volatile, just like stocks, yet the returns are lousy, Bob. It pays no dividend. And if you look at the growth on gold over time, you're better off in a bond portfolio, which is much more conservative. Gold is really never a good investment, even though those gold commercials love to tell you the opposite. Well, these gold people have been telling you for the last 10 years to buy gold and sell your stocks. Uh, gold's up a whopping 66% over 10 years. Not bad, right, right? Yeah, 66%, I'll take it. Better than a sharp stick in the eye, as they say. Of course, 25% of that move came in the last three months. <laughs> um, but when you compare it to what the stock market did over the last 10 years, how does it look? Yeah, not great at all. The stock market's up over 300%, and you took the same risk because gold, again, fluctuates just like stocks. So, Bob, you know, for my money, gold is never a good investment. Don't believe the hype. Well, Rye, here's why I never own gold. Number one, it's too heavy to carry around. You can't eat it, and it doesn't pay a dividend. Bob, no truer words have been spoken, so, which leads me to my last piece of fake news that we're hearing all the time right now. The recession is coming. I'm so tired of hearing about a recession, Bob. I just can't take it anymore. Right. Aren't you aware that when the yield curve inverts, a recession's inevitable? <laughs> the problem is, is it inevitable in a year, two years, even further out than that? Bob, I, you know, it's, I don't think that's a very good indicator. No, it's not a good indicator at all. And of course, you said it's fake news. It's advertised improperly. It has to invert and stay inverted for three months. And then perhaps we get a recession. But, you know, this past week, housing starts, you know, beginning of new homes, 12 year high. That's not a recession. That's a booming economy. With, you know, unemployment at one of the lowest levels in 50 years, wages are going up. Right. Again, don't believe the hype. Most likely we're probably not going to recession, especially with the economic data being so strong. That's more fake news. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. That's a full holistic review that will run with no obligation or cost. All you need to do is bring in your statements, print them off the computer, bring them in the office. August statements are probably in. We're going to take all that data and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal where we can get a bird's eye view of your entire financial picture and we can start to look at all the critical components. We're going to look at everything from income. Income is so critical for retirement. Have you figured out how you're going to generate income for retirement? How are you going to pull from your portfolio if you're going to retire, if you're retired now? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. We're going to look at diversification. What underlying risks do you have in your portfolio? Did you feel the volatility the last couple months in the stock market? Have you been feeling the volatility in the stock market? What underlying risk in your portfolio could derail your retirement? We're going to show you where all the hidden risks are in your portfolio. And we're going to look at fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your investment portfolio you don't know you're paying. In those mutual funds, annuity products, insurance products, brokerage products, we're going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio show you how to reduce costs so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together and give you one total financial master plan and determine that most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies now our family has literally been working on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan. Or visit our website, bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply click the Get Started button on BeBullish.com.
Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone, gird your loins. Let's find out. So, Bob, as you know, there's a lot of confusion out there when we talk about the A word. And I'm going to be provocative today. I'm going to talk about that A word, which you and I know is to be annuities. They tend to be somewhat complex and not necessarily easy to understand. Whether you already own an annuity or thinking about it, you probably have a lot of questions about whether this is something you should or shouldn't have as part of your retirement investment plan. So I thought we could break down annuities a little bit this morning for our listeners. Well, before we start, Ry, I want to make something perfectly clear. We All will right. never buy you an annuity, but we do help our clients sell out of their annuities almost every time we meet someone with one. That's a really good point, Bob. We do a great job analyzing any type of annuity you're being sold or you own right now. But because we know so much about annuities, it's so hard to sell one because they're usually not a great deal for the client if we had to be real about it, Bob. Well, let's be real about it, right? It's a great deal for the insurance company. But the insurance company has the same marketplace to invest in as you do as an investor. So basically, they go out and they buy the portfolio of bonds or stocks or whatever they need to get the return to pay you. But of course, you know, you're know you paying a big toll in between. You're paying them a lot of money to get you the returns that you can get on your own. Well, and it sounds really sexy. You know, you have a lot of these different marketing taglines like income for life. I mean, who doesn't want income for life? That sounds great to me. If I'm going to be retired, I'd love to have an income stream that's just coming in where I don't have to worry about what the market's doing and I don't have to worry about the value of my portfolio. What's wrong with that, Bob? You know, Rod, there's nothing wrong with that statement whatsoever. But annuities aren't the best way to do that. It sounds good, but there are always better ways to come with a better solution that's less expensive and more beneficial to you and your family. Yeah, and I think the big rule of thumb here is whenever you get an annuity and you get, let's say, an income stream for life, the problem is you always have to give something up. And a lot of times that's liquidity. Like you can get income for life, but the insurance company is then going to take your principal. And I've run the math on this, Bob. A lot of times all the insurance company is doing is paying back your principal to you with a little bit of return over time. Whereas you could have done the same thing on your own and probably gotten better returns. Yeah, I think it's called a money market fund, right? <laughs> but it doesn't get pitched that way, does it? The other thing is there's other annuities out there like variable annuities where they have a tax deferred component to it. And tax deferred sounds great, Bob. I love not paying taxes. Why wouldn't I do that with my money? Well, you know, Ry, I, I agree with it. I think uh, deferring taxes is a admirable idea. First, that's why you have a 401k plan or an IRA it's a great way to get a tax deduction, let your money grow tax deferred, building tax efficient portfolios by buying municipal bonds where you pay no income tax. That's better than deferring, paying no tax on the return or having appreciation in your stock portfolio where you only pay tax you know, when you liquidate. Problem with a variable annuity is it's extremely expensive. You usually have to overcome almost three and a half percent before you make dime one. That's the crazy part. If you start looking at the fees within these annuities, which you never see, by the way, and sometimes they'll even tell you that there's no cost, but we know there's no free lunch when it comes to investing. But once we further investigate, a lot of times you're paying 3 4% a year, and it's really hard to grow your money out if you're paying that much in fees right off the top. You really need to understand how these things work, Bob. You know, in all fairness, right, it's not their fault. You know, it's not your fault that you don't know about these internal costs because no salesman, no annuity producer will tell you about these things. They only sell you the sizzle. The only way you can really find out what you're paying is to get on the phone with an advisor like us with the insurance company directly and get the back office people because they'll tell you the bold truth because they have nothing to hide. Uh, they just don't know that you didn't know. That's right. So the worst thing you can do is go back to the salesperson that sold you the annuity to explain again how it works because, again, it's going to sound great. And it's my favorite analogy, Bob, this is definitely a Bobism is when you buy an annuity, it's like Chinese food. It tastes so good going down, but you feel so empty later. <laughs> because yeah. all the numbers like a half hour great. later. <laughs> half bad. hour later. It doesn't even take um, a little hour. You know, right down in our Philadelphia office, we actually keep smelling salts in the office because when we do make these calls to the insurance company and you know, one fee after another fee starts to pile up, you know, one of the spouses usually turns white and gets ready to faint. We've got to revive them because they have no idea that there's this much complexity and cost involved in what appeared to be a very simple idea. Yeah, and I think the other part of it too, we have to think about when in terms of your planning is if you're getting a fixed income stream for life, that doesn't change. I mean, you get the same amount from the annuity company year after year, 
But one of the problems is your cost of living is going up over time. So after five, 10 years, that amount coming in isn't worth as much as it was when you started. You need your money growing over time because your expenses go up over time just because things cost more. Bingo, Ra, you just nailed it on the head. The biggest risk you all face right now is inflation. It's insidious, it's hidden, and it's real. Your cost of living is gonna go up you know, and double you know, every 20 or 30 years. And you have an annuity, you can't keep up. You have no inflation hedge whatsoever. Yeah, so one of the things you have to think about when you're building your financial plan is you do need income coming in, but you need income coming in that increases over time because your lifestyle is gonna increase over time. Something like a fixed annuity just doesn't solve for that. So it's so, so important that you really start to look at what your expenses are going to look like, not just today, but over the next five years, 10 years. You know, you really have to model that out so you can figure out exactly where you need to invest your money. You know, as right, simple as buying municipal bonds or investing in municipal bonds where your income is, is tax-free. And it doesn't take much of an income bracket today to benefit, you know, from municipal bonds. So why have a taxable income stream when you can have a tax-free income stream plus liquidity plus the ability to get your money anytime you want and a diversified portfolio because last i checked these investments these annuities are only backed by one company and companies do fail yeah that's another great point is all that money with that insurance company you're still betting on that insurance company being in business for the rest of your life which they could be but it's a big bet to make the things we talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard to understand financial landscape. That's why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you, so we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. It's the only review you need for 2019. What we'd like you to do is gather all your statements, Put them in a folder, stick them in a shopping bag. You don't even have to open the envelopes. We'll review everything with you and build your own personalized 360 financial portal, which will allow you to become financially organized. And not only that, be able to view your complete financial life in real time at your convenience when you feel like looking at it. Not only that, we're going to break down your portfolio to see and identify if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. We're going to look at cost. We're going to look at income. We're going to look at diversification. You know, diversification is the key to success in investing. It's the only free lunch on Wall Street. We want to make sure you're getting your free lunch. We're going to look at everything in your portfolio to make sure there's no hidden risk or no risk that you only recognize in hindsight. Cost. You know what? I hate to be overcharged by anybody, and I particularly despise being overcharged by my own portfolio. I'm sure you're the same way. Let's see if we can reduce some of those costs and reveal those hidden fees that you weren't aware of. And lastly, income. Boy, we can increase the cash flow and make it more dependable, make it more repeatable, because once you're retired, not only do you need that income to fill that income gap from retirement, but you know, the number one goal of every retired client I work with today is to stay retired. And that requires income, repeatable, dependable income. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and answer that age old question for you and your family. Are you going to outlive your money or will your money outlive you? utilizing strategies that my son and I have been perfecting now for over four decades. That's right. Our family's been working for over 40 years, helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the Total Financial Master Plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844 752 Six six nine two, and tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692 or click the get started button on bbullish.com. It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. If you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can email us directly, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. 
And this week, like every week, we get some great questions. We have our man in the studio, Dan Irving, here to help us with questions this week. Good morning, Dan. How's it going? Good morning, Ryan and Bob. I'm enjoying the first official weekend of fall. Temperatures are dropping, and I'm already seeing Halloween candy on sale. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it gets earlier every single year. It really does. It's like, where did summer go? It was like two weeks ago, and now it's uh, we're thinking about the end of the year. It's uh, it's a little depressing, actually. You know, we're thinking of Halloween candy. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Oh, Reese's peanut butter cups, Bob. Chocolate and oh. peanut butter is my vice. How about you? Yes. You know, I used to sneak those out of your bag when you came off the street and, and put them in the freezer. You didn't know that. We're all in agreement <laughs> here. Reese's peanut butter yeah. cups, the best candy. My favorite. All right, we got totally some agree. great questions on the mailbag today. Our first question is from Greg in Madison, New Jersey, and Greg says, Bob, my company is offering the option of a lump sum pension buyout, or we can just keep the monthly pension throughout retirement if we want. Should I take the buyout or keep the pension? What do you think? Well, you know what, Greg, we get this question a lot. And first of all, you're fortunate you know, to even have that option because a lot of companies have done away with their pension. And you know, when you get a pension payment from your company, it's for life. So that's, that's a pretty good benefit. But of course, you know, you have to do the analysis because if you took that lump sum and invested it on your own, didn't go out and, you know, buy a new Maserati or a Rolls Royce or something and invested it properly, sometimes you'd be able to generate even more income for life. So it's uh, it's really comes down to the analysis. And, and you know, Rye, we see this all the time, you know, where the number looks good, but then when you put it into a diversified portfolio, the numbers look a lot better. And there are some risks, aren't there, Ryan, in, in accepting a pension payout? That's not guaranteed, is it? Well, that's right. It depends on how the company does. The company goes bankrupt, there goes your pension as well. In some cases, the pension number can be fantastic, take it. But to your point, Bob, you want to run those numbers because a lot of times it's better to have all that money for yourself to invest and then replicate it and build your own pension, which you can do. I mean, that's the whole idea of building what we call wealth distribution strategy is you take your money and you build a way to make it pension like for yourself. And a lot of times that's a better way to go than relying on a company that may or may not be there for the next 10, 15, 20 years. But again, you have to run the numbers on that. Yeah, And sometimes to protect against that bankruptcy, right? They'll put your money into one of those. What was that A word you talked about earlier? Annuity. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Put it into an annuity. <laughs> um, and again, there's your biggest problem. Again, you don't have that hedge against inflation. And I'll tell you that, that wealth projection that you know you do for for your clients is so valuable for you to be able to see what your purchasing power looks like today and what it will look like every year for the rest of your life. It really kind of crystallizes your thinking on how your portfolio should be built. And I'll tell you, all of you need to know two things: you need to know what you own, and you need to know why you own it. And once you know those things, one picture will solve all these issues. All right. Thank you, Greg, for writing in. Our next question is from Carol in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. She says, Ryan, I have a lot of major life changes occurring in the next six months that I think will affect how I should be invested. Should I just park my money in cash until life settles down and I know what my future will look like? Well, here's the problem is I think one of the problems a lot of us have right now is we have too much money sitting in cash right now. And with interest rates so low, Carol, you're earning nothing on your money. Now, don't get me wrong. You always want to have your emergency fund. That's huge. And rule of thumb is have about six months of expenses always there at your disposal if you need it. But when you start having 100000 200000 300 we even see like a half a million sitting in cash, this can be very, very detrimental to your retirement. We see this all the time, Bob. You know, right? you're absolutely right. You know, how much money you have is relative. Right? And I find that the older... I get, and the older my clients get, the more conservative we become. And, and when we talk about parking some cash, some people think maybe 10000 But I've seen people with $600,000, 2000000 3000000 sitting in cash because they're not certain about their future. And the problem with that is, even if it's over a six-month period, it doesn't seem like a lot of time, it's so critical that you're compounding your money. We talked about inflation today. Your cost of living is continually going up. And if you're only earning even 2%, which is like a very high money market rate right now, First off, you have to pay taxes on that 2%. So once you pay taxes, maybe you're getting 1.5%. And cost of living is going up closer to 2% a year. Every single 6, 12 months, your money is dwindling in purchasing power. Whereas you have an investment portfolio, you're earning dividends and interest every single day. And that's the real magic to investing. And that's what you really need to have to get your retirement goals achieved throughout your lifetime. That's a good point, right? Because you know money market funds are variable. And rates are dropping like a rock, like a stone in the river. And those interest rates are going to go down. So you can't even depend on that for income. 
So, you know, having an income plan, having a wealth projection done will really make these decisions a lot easier, Carol. And I think what you ought to do is, you know, be one of our next few callers. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free and you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts, just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple, common-sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555 555- 888. That's the word bullish to 555-888 or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, Check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.